Hey everybody, this is Kevin with AGL. We want to thank you for joining us back for the second part of our Scratch Build series. In the last video, you saw us build this high wing trainer, install the electronics, go over the plans and everything, and now we're going to program our radio to work for this aircraft. We had originally uh, thought of using our uh, Spectrum DX9 to show you how to build a simple four channel program. Uh, we were taking some goggles back to Oak Mountain Hobbies, and they actually gave us the Spectrum DX6 to demo to bring over and because it's more an entry level radio it's just under two hundred dollars and uh, we'll show you how to set up a four channel uh, simple program and show you how to use Expo with this radio here in just one second alright so we have our brand new Spectrum DX6 uh, the new DX6 looks a little different than the DX6i uh, the protocol that's in this one is the same as in the new DX7, DX9, and DX18. This is a very nice radio, and uh, we're going to show you how to do a simple four channel program with this radio. Before we power up the aircraft, we want to start by building our aircraft inside the radio. When we power it up for the first time, uh, we should come up with a screen that has a little picture of an airplane. Uh, our default timer is five minutes, and we'll have acro at the top. One of the first things I like to do is to turn down the volume. So as we're working through these menus, we won't have this really loud beeping noise. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing I like to do is to, and I'll try to describe exactly what I'm doing. I'm pushing the scroll wheel over here to go into the menu. And I'm just going to go, I'm going to scroll all the way down to system setup hit the scroll wheel and it's going to give you a warning just to let you know that it's about to turn off the RF energy from the radio so you won't be transmitting anymore we're going to say yes and then scroll down to model name and I'm going to change the name and this one you scroll all the way through and we're just going to set this one up for AGL When we're finished, we go to back. If you go to aircraft type, you can see the different type of wing selections as you roll through with the scroll wheel. Uh, if you click on wing, then you can change for different types of wings. Uh, we have a single servo aileron setup. So we're actually going to use the default one, the very first one. And our tail is a traditional tail, just like this. So we're going to use the default setup there. We're going to go to the next screen and we can actually choose a different image. Uh, we can scroll back and forth through several different types of airplanes and we're just going to go with the default one up front. We're not going to need an F mode switch for this aircraft because we don't have a flight controller or anything like that. So we'll skip that. Uh, we can actually go in here and change uh, some of the speech pattern for the different modes that we set up. If we need to assign extra channels we can go in here uh, the default, of course, is going to be 1 through 6. It's going to be throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, and auxiliary. We can change that as needed. Uh, trim setup, everything is, is neutral. We're going to leave it there. Um, we can change some of the warnings. Uh, so you have, if you have a little bit of throttle uh, on your radio and you go to power up your airplane or your radio, it's going to let you know, hey, that you've got you're showing throttle on the radio before you power up the aircraft. Uh, we don't have telemetry on this setup. We're just doing a real simple setup. One neat thing about this new protocol is that you can do a pre-flight setup. So if you have several different switches, you can make sure you can go through these pre-flight menus and set the, for your switches to have to be in a certain direction before the radio will arm. One thing we are going to use is this new bind mode. Um, but for now, we're just going to scroll back up to the main screen. And you can see by the orange light that we're transmitting again. So all we did is confirm our wing setup and we put our name in. Now if we hit the scroll wheel again, we go back to the uh, main menu. And we can scroll down to see the servo setup. And it's all at default right now. Uh, dual rates and expos. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But 
what we're going to do first is get this guy bound up. So to bind this radio to this airplane, we want to first turn off the radio. We built the model inside the radio. Now we're going to shut the radio down, set it off to the side, install our bind plug. And from the last video, uh, hopefully you remember that we installed the bind plug in our small little four channel receiver here in our bay. So all that's left to do now is to put some power to this guy. Uh, make sure to remove the prop if you haven't already, just in case as a safeguard. So we're going to power up our aircraft. And you see on the receiver, you have a flashing orange light. That's indicating that the receiver is in buy mode. So we are going to remove the bind plug. Okay, so you can see that we've removed the bind plug. Our receiver is still flashing orange. And now what we're going to do is we are going to depress this big button at the top, which is the bind button, hold it down, and then turn on the radio. And I'm going to move the radio off the screen because you need to make sure to have uh, four or five feet of space between your radio and the receiver. Okay. Now you can see the orange light on the receiver is steady and our radio. Uh, we actually had the confirmation of the, the voice inside the radio to tell us when it was in bind mode and that the bind was complete. It told us that it bound uh, the radio to that receiver using DSM, DSMX at 22 milliseconds. And now as we move the sticks, we can see all the control surfaces moving. Okay, so one of the things that we're going to do is confirm that the control surfaces are moving the way that we need. Now you can see I'm moving the, the stick on the right. I'm moving it left and right, which moves the aileron servo. Now as I move the stick left, then it should pick up the left aileron and push the right aileron down. So that's moving the proper direction. If we move over to the left stick, if we move it left and right, then we see the closest servo here, which is our rudder servo move. As I move the stick left, then it should push that rod towards the, the rudder, pushing the rudder over to the other direction. So we need to reverse that channel. How we're going to do that is depress our scroll wheel. We're going to go to servo setup and use our scroll wheel. Uh, to go to the top menu here where it says travel. We're going to press it and then scroll over till we see reverse. And then we're going to scroll past the throttle and aileron elevator to rudder. To press it one time and you see rudder is reversed. Now, when we move the rudder stick back and forth, it's moving in the proper direction. So we'll go back up to list and enter our main menu. Now, for the elevator, we need to just rotate the plane a little bit to confirm that our elevator is going to move the proper direction. Our elevator is, of course, on the right stick. We push up and down. We pull back, and the rod should push towards the rear of the plane, moving the elevator upward, which it is doing. So all that's good. Uh, if that wasn't correct, then we would do the same thing. Hit the scroll wheel one time. We go to servo setup, then to travel, hit the scroll wheel, go over to reverse, and then we would go to elevator and select that. Okay, so all of our control surfaces are already set up and going the proper direction. So that's great. Uh, one other thing we need to confirm is our motor to make sure our motor is spinning the proper direction. If we rotate the aircraft around, uh, this motor, 
this motor needs to rotate towards the right wing. How we're going to confirm that? We, of course, have removed the prop for safety. We're going to take our throttle stick and slowly rotate it up. And we see our motor is spinning the wrong direction. How we're going to correct that is by reversing two of these ESC plugs. It's always a good idea to unplug the battery prior to doing this. With a brushless motor, this is all you have to do to reverse it. Alright, we have changed those. Our motor should be spinning in the proper direction. I'm going to plug our battery back in. And check for rotation. And now we're spinning in the proper direction. Okay, so we've already covered most of the necessities to make this aircraft fly. Uh, a couple of neat little things about this radio that I like to do is to set up two different timers. Uh, this way we have a countdown timer, so if once we're flying our aircraft, we're seeing that we're getting about five to six minutes, and I'll set one up for five and a half minutes, depending on my flying style that day, so it'll count down, and then it'll let me know when it expires. I will also set a count up timer, just in case I end up flying a different battery or I start to get better flight times, I'll know how much better of a flight time I'm actually getting. So how we're going to set these up, depress the scroll wheel, we go halfway down to timer, select it, and our first timer is a countdown from five minutes. We're going to change that to five and a half. Uh, the start is on the throttle stick. That will actually start the timer. That is one great step up from this DX6, from the old DX6i. The old DX6i, you had your timer set on a trainer switch or something like that. With this new protocol, it defaults to a mix with your throttle. So as you increase the throttle, even if you forget to start the timer, your timer's going already. And I know that was a big complaint with the guys that have the DX6i. Uh, if the throttle stick is above 25%, the timer is indicating, or it starts counting down. I'm actually going to bump that down to 10%. I'm going to go to the next screen. And you can actually have the voice alert countdown from every minute which is a bit much um, so I'm going to start at one minute and she'll give me a one minute warning and then again at 30 seconds and all I'm doing is selecting this and you have a tone so it either beep you have the voice or nothing so we're going to go with voice and she will count down for one minute 30 seconds 10 seconds and then the expiration and for every minute I go up, I'll let her tell me. So we go to the next, and you can actually have a tone or the voice indicate when your timer is starting and stopping and has been reset. And I usually will go through and set all that to inhibited. This seems a bit much if I'm up and gliding around every time I move the throttle, it's saying timer stop, start, timer stop, timer start, timer stop. And that just seems a bit much for me. So I went back to the list. We're going to go back into timers and set up a second timer. Right now that's inhibited. We're actually going to, going to do the stopwatch. And it also defaults to the throttle stick, which is really nice. Uh, we're going to set it just like the other one to 10% and then go to the next screen. And we're going to leave everything inhibited for this screen. We're going to go back up to the main menu and then confirm. Props off. The airplane is initiated. You can see. The first timer starts counting down, the second timer starts counting up. At the top right, we have our battery voltage inside the radio. 
And then these are our trim tabs. Uh, while we're flying around, if we decide that we need to trim out the radio, uh, the trim tabs are much nicer than they were with the DX6i on this new radio. And you can actually see how far off center you're moving. But next, uh, we're going to talk about setting up Expo. Hey fellas, before we cover uh, setting up Expo in your radio, I want to show you a setting uh, to adjust your, your sub-trims. Uh, a lot of guys, they get into this and they don't read all the way through the manuals and they don't know what some of the functions inside the radios will do, but, but sub-trims is a, a pretty important part. Uh, like with this aileron servo, you can see it's not quite centered. Now I can adjust that with these uh, push rods here adjusting their length so I get the aileron set just right but one side will have a little more throw than the other so we need to go into the radio and adjust the sub trim to get that uh, servo true to center and how we're going to do that is depress our scroll wheel we're going to go to servo setup again and then highlight travel we're going to go over one to sub trim select it and go to the aileron channel and we can scroll it and it will raise or lower the left aileron and on our setup since we have only one uh, servo then we're going to just keep rolling it over until that servo looks center All right that looks good so I'm going to leave it there and then go back out to the main menu and now you see that our servo is far more centered than it was before. Also during the short break I installed the push rods on all the control surfaces so we'll be able to more clearly see how this uh, expo is going to function here. And we're mostly going to work with the rudder channel since it's the closest to us. If we manipulate the rudder you'll be able to see it move back and forth in the bottom of the frame. Alright so to adjust our sub trims uh, one other neat feature about this radio as opposed to the old Spectrum DX6i is that each of your sub trims was assigned to its own channel and its own switch. Uh, which So if you wanted to have a dual rate set up on your ailerons and the elevator and the rudder then you'd have to flip four or five different switches to get that to the, to the mode you want. And now we can do all that with just one switch. And I'm going to assign my dual rates to this three position switch up here, the B switch, just because uh, I fly a lot of multi rotors and that's usually, uh, and collective pitch helicopters, and that's usually uh, my different modes. So I like to have that switch. I'm just used to using my index finger there. But you'll be able to set this up on any switch of your choosing with this new protocol, which is also a really nice feature about the new DX6. To set that up, again, we're going to depress the scroll wheel. We're going to go to DR and Expo, which is dual rate and Expo. And I like to leave my rates at 100% most of the time and just increase the Expo or Exponential. And what that's going to do is when my stick is centered, I'm going to have a very soft feel to the control surface. And as I move farther and farther out, depending on the rate of Expo, of Exponential, then I'm going to get that, that full authority out of that control surface. So we're going to start over with ailerons. And I'm going to assign this to the switch B. So we'll do that first. Let's scroll down here to switch. And right now it just says on. We're going to go to switch B. So zero position all the way away from us is going to be 100% of rate. That's the amount of deflection we're going to get from our control surface. And 0% expo. So you have full authority at all times. For the secondary mode, you can see it swaps to curve one, which is the one position in the middle of that switch. We're going to leave it again at a 100% rate, and I'm going to give it 50% expo. And you see our curve change over here. So as we are in the center, you can see on the graph, we have little amounts of throw, but as we move to the extreme on the graph, we get our full throw and we move 
to the third position on that switch, we are going to actually reduce the rate a little bit. We'll take it down to 70. And we'll give it, again, 50% expo. And you can see how it changes the graph. Our end point for that control surface, we reduced its throw from 100% to 70%. And we increased the exponential to 50%. So, again, I'm very soft in the center, but as I move all the way out, I get just a little bit of aileron throw. Now, we said that we can set all of our dual rates and expos onto this one switch. I'm actually going to switch this back to zero and then go back to our channel, which is going to be aileron, and flip it over to elevator. And I'm going to do just as before, I'm going to go down here to switch, which is defaults to on, and change it to B. And I'm going to do just like before, I'm going to have 100% and zero expo. Move my switch one spot and I get to the one position in the middle. And I'm going to start out with 50% expo and 100% throw, just like before. And then I'm going to move my switch to the other spot, the closest to me. And I'm again going to give it 50%. And we are going to reduce the rate down to 70, just like with the aileron. And this is a good starting point. Uh, when you're filling out a new airplane, such as this one is a scratch built, we're not exactly sure how it's going to fly. It should be pretty docile because it's a high wing trainer with a lot of camber in that wing. Uh, we're actually going to start out in the middle mode. So I'll have 100% deflection, but the, si the sticks are softer in the middle because I have that 50% of expo. I'm going to take my switch and rotate it all the way back to the, to the zero position, farthest away from me. And next I'm going to go to elevator. We are on elevator. I'm going to go to rotor. So, we're going to do just like before, go down here and change the switch to B. We're going to leave the far away position at 100% rate and 0% expo, then go to the next position and give it 50% expo. And go to the next position on the switch, again give it 50% expo. I'm actually going to give this one 50% throw, just as a demonstration to you. So we're finished with our dual rate setup, and it's all on this one switch. So let's see how that reacts on the airplane, okay? Now if you watch the rudder right here, then you'll be able to see right now we have full deflection. Okay? This is full deflection with our rudder, which is plenty for this aircraft. We're going to move to the secondary position and I'm going to try and bring the radio back in the field of view so you can see the control stick here and the rudder. Now as I start to move the stick you see it's just barely I get a lot of play area before you start to see movement in the rudder. That's because we have 100% throw but only we have 50% expo so we're soft in the center but as we move that stick to the extreme, we still get that 100% of throw with our rudder. So it's really soft in the center. And then as we get farther away, you start to see the rudder move. If we go to the original position, which is 100% throw and zero expo, it's more of a rate mode. As you move the stick, you get that same amount of rate with your rudder. We turn on the 50% expo. And it's again soft in the center and then as you get to the extreme it rotates over. Now on this third position we have 50% expo again but only 70% deflection. So you see you have to really move that stick to get some deflection with our rudder. So if you're new this is really going to help you out uh, because it's going to help you from getting too nervous and moving the sticks all about in a feverish manner and get the airplane all out of whack. It's going to make you a lot smoother which is going to make you a better pilot. A couple other quick things that we did to the aircraft before we get ready to maiden it. Um, we took our receiver and we put a little piece of velcro in here and attached it to the inner wall and we just pushed the door back too. Now we don't have to worry about this door coming open, it's just holding right here 
And if we ever need to get in there, we can take a little screwdriver and pop that door back open, but we shouldn't need to get back in there. We also, once we figured out exactly how long our push rods need to be, we took a little bit of hot glue and set these servos in. So now this airplane is ready to, to maiden. All we have to do is put a balanced prop on it and we're going to tidy up uh, the wiring a little bit in and around the battery and throw it in the air. Uh, this has been Kevin with AGL uh, demonstrating how to do a simple four channel setup with our Spectrum DX9 and correction our Spectrum DX6 here uh, and setting up our Expos. And of course, uh, thanks to Oak Mountain Hobbies for allowing us to use this brand new uh, Spectrum DX6 for our demo. Thanks.